modern girl of today actively takes part in a variety of sports, undreamed of by the girls of a previous generation. No race is too severe, no hurdles too high for the present day Amazon. And not only do they compete in nearly all sports, but they have created records of high standing. Throwing the discus, sport of ancient Greece, for a distance of nearly 100 feet is easy for Elizabeth Lindsay while Sylvia Rothenberg tosses the eight-pound shot for almost 35 feet. Alice Arden has won the women's national high jump titles for four consecutive years. Pretty and red-haired, she combines grace and agility in clearing the bar at five feet, three and three-quarters inches. And now for a duel in the running broad jump, Marie Cottrell leads off with a jump of exactly 14 feet. She is followed by Sybil Koff, who betters the mark, but with a little spill. Marie comes back again with a jump of 14 feet, six and a quarter inches. Only to be beaten by Sybil, who makes a leap of 14 feet, 10 and three quarters inches. The old Indian game of lacrosse is fast becoming popular with high school and college girls. The idea is to toss or carry the ball through the goal posts at either end of the field. The tossing and carrying is done with a long racket and net called a cross. Speed and endurance are essential, for most of the game is a chase, with control and stick work and rapid passing on the run. Maneuvering for the proper position, a straight hard shot is deftly placed, and the ball goes in for a point. They're off in a canoe race up in New England. Since these Indian boats are easily upset, not only are strength and skill required, but also complete coordination. As the race enters the final stretch, the girls give the paddles everything they've got. And what a happy bunch, those first to cross the finish line. Proud to know that they can paddle their own canoes. Still in New England, at Wellesley College, they go in for racing in shells, like their brother collegians. As the boats get underway, passing the classic landscape, they soon pick up speed, for training has given the girls hard muscles. Interclass competition is keen, and the desire to win is strong with each of the eight girls in the boat. Every last ounce of effort is used, as the race ends in a close finish. Within recent years, women have taken a great interest in competitive swimming events. Here in the one mile freestyle championship race, Lenore Kite Wingard of the Carnegie Library Club of Homestead, Pennsylvania takes the lead right from the start. Holder of three national indoor titles for four years in succession, the Carnegie Queen displays the finest form of her brilliant career. Completely outclassing her four rivals, she thrashes home to victory in the record time of 22 minutes 39 and 2 tenths seconds. Feminine divers, beautiful, graceful, lovely to look at, especially in slow motion. A 220-yard backstroke race with the record holder, Eleanor Holm Jarrett. Famous not only as a great swimmer, Eleanor is now internationally known because she was refused permission to compete in the Olympic Games of 1936. The huge audience is thrilled by her stirring performance as she comes into the home stretch, just ahead of Elizabeth Kampa, another ace mermaid, in the record time of two minutes, 56 and four tenths seconds. A magnificent performance, 
by a beautiful woman. Tennis has always ranked high as a favorite feminine sport. Here on the famed center court at Wimbledon, England, a strong defending team consisting of Frida James and Kay Stammers, British stars, are putting up a terrific fight against the invading American team of Helen Jacobs and Sarah Palfrey Fabian. Each play is hotly contested, neither side giving their opponent any quarter. But when a break finally does occur, Miss Stammers and Miss Jacobs walk off together, friendly enemies. In the spectacular ski jump, the iron nerves of their Viking ancestors are manifested by Norwegian girls, who nevertheless are careful to brush off their clothes in truly feminine fashion. While their younger sisters gaze admiringly, they calmly launch themselves into space, landing square on their feet in perfect form. In Norway, too, the world's champion figure skater, Sonja Henny, cavorts on the ice, twirling and pirouetting like a ballet dancer. In fact, she has often been called the Pavlova of the rink. Her graceful artistry and personal charm have brought her wide acclaim in many countries throughout the world, where she has made public appearances. From the ice and snow, we travel south to Spain, where skies are sunny and women are bullfighters. For it is a mighty brave senorita who is battling the bull in the great arena today. Very few women, or men, would dare face such a dangerous adversary and take such risks with their lives. Another medieval sport in which women partake is fencing. In this, however, formality and regulations play an important part. But foils women, too, need an aggressive attitude, speed of attack, fine balance, and suppleness of muscle in outplacing their opponent. Even such a managed game as pool or pocket billiards is now indulged in by the ladies, some of whom are experts. Here we find the Flower Sisters, members of a family famous in sports, engaged in an evening's entertainment. Well, these girls know their P's and Q's, especially the Q's, <laughs> and how they should be handled. Florence is not only the family champ, but has competed with top-ranking professionals. There are very few shots, no matter how intricate, that she hasn't mastered. As the balls fly around the table, they form various combinations, each a separate problem to be played in its own way. Where pool is played, their bowling is usually found too, and the ladies are hard at it. Of course, they don't always make a perfect strike, but there are many who can invariably be counted on for high scores. In this class is pretty Patricia Prescott, a 19-year-old wonder, whose strong arm and sure aim seldom fail as she speeds the ball down the alley for another strike. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, smiling Aurelia Wielden. In the opposite corner, Emma Maitland, in a boxing exhibition for the female Fisty Cup Championship of Harlem. Both girls are experienced boxers, well-versed in the manly, or rather womanly, art of self-defense. Emma has the advantage in weight, height, and reach. But that doesn't frighten Aurelia, who is out to prove that she is no setup. And the crowd is with her. fiery little bantam rushes in faster and faster. Big Emma begins to show signs of fatigue. A quick right to the head and a left to the jaw. And down she goes. As the referee begins counting one, two, three. She tries to shake the cobwebs from her head, but it's no use. She's down for the count. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner. Hallelujah. <laughs>